Today, in finite state morphology, we will be looking at the tokenization of sentences into words. Specifically, we will be building a finite state transducer that accepts as its input a sentence and produces as its output the sequence of tokens that make up that sentence. To do this, we are going to write a finite state machine that will be usable in both XFST and in FOMA. Let's begin. We're going to begin by creating a text file that we will use to put in our definitions. I'm going to call this tokenize.xfst. This is simply a plain text file. The example that we will be using is taken from Chapter 9 of the Finite State Morphology textbook. You can follow along there. In this example, we're going to make use of the echo command. The echo command simply echoes or prints a string to the user. The string that we're going to print here will inform the user of what we're doing, namely that we're going to be defining certain finite state transducers. At this point, if we run the file, we will get this message printed out. Let's try. If we run XFST with the dash H flag, or with the dash help flag, we get usage information. Here we see that if we use the dash F flag and provide a script file name, the commands in the script will be executed and then XFST will exit. We can observe that the message that we, that we asked to be printed out was XFST also prints by when it quits. Similarly, if we run FOMA with the dash H flag, we see that FOMA has a very similar dash F option that reads commands from a named script file on startup and then quits. The behavior that we see here is exactly what we expect. The string listed after the echo command is printed. Notice that FOMA does not print by. Let's continue editing our text file by actually defining some white space characters. One white space character is the space character. We have a couple of options at this point. One would be to put the space character inside quotation marks. Another would be to use the Unicode escape sequence. If we look through the Unicode table, we can see that the uh, code point is 0020. XFST and FOMA is support Unicode 16-bit Unicode escape sequences, so we could put this in as such. This can be very useful for characters that are difficult to otherwise type. 
This can also be useful if the text editor that you're using is not properly configured to uh, handle Unicode characters. Another white space character is tab. Tab has a code point of 0009. New line is another character that we want to handle, also known as line feed. And if we want to handle text files that have come from multiple operating systems, it may also be useful to define carriage return. Having defined these individual characters, we can now define a machine called whitespace. Whitespace will be the union of these four machines. Another way of thinking about this is that we are defining white space to be a space character or a tab character or a new line character or a carriage return character. At this point, we could see to we could see what our machine looks like. If we run FOMA with the dash L flag and provide the script. The commands from the script will be read and then we will be left in interactive mode. Here we see that the echo command echoed out the uh, message. The individual machines were defined. And then finally, the white space machine was defined, having two states, a start state and an end state, and four individual arcs, one for space, one for tab, one for new line, and one for carriage return. Here, space is literally space. Here we have a tab character. Here we have the escape code for new line and the escape code for carriage return. In this view, the literal characters are printed and so we can't see them. The next step in defining our tokenizer will be to define individual punctuation symbols.
There are a lot of punctuation symbols that we could include. We're going to include, for this example, only some of the most common punctuation symbols that are likely to occur in English text. In order for, the, for your tokenizer to have the most coverage, you would want to determine what characters you want to support and then include all of those characters. The double quotation mark is one of the characters that we will include. Again, we will use the Unicode escape sequence. Otherwise, we could use the escape character, which in FOMA and XFST is the percent sign, to escape the double quote symbol. This is necessary because the double quote symbol is reserved in XFST and in FOMA. We'll get around that by using the Unicode escape sequence. We'll also go ahead and put a comment in, specifying that this is quotation mark. Next, let's cover the period, or full stop symbol. The comma. the semicolon, the colon, the exclamation mark, question mark, next let's add some parentheses. We will just do for now uh, parentheses curly braces, and square braces. Note that it is important to put Unicode escape sequences inside single inside quotation marks. and square brackets.
we can test this machine by going back to XFST or FOMA and taking a look at the machine. And there we see the individual symbols. Alternatively, in XFST. Next, let's define a few sequences of single characters. These are sequences of punctuation symbols that should be treated as a single token. The first will be a sequence of two or three periods serving as an ellipsis. We will mark the optionality of the third by putting it inside parentheses. Again, if you prefer, you could simply put the period inside the single quotes. Next, we will look at quotation marks made from two single quotation marks. Or similarly, a closing quotation made from two right single quotation marks. Next, let's define a regular symbol as being anything that is not white space nor a punctuation symbol.
Again, we're following the example in the book using slightly uh, more explicit names. Excuse me, we're defining a punctuation symbol. as a punctuation, as a single punctuation mark or a punctuation sequence. We could also define a character which will be in a word as anything that is not byte space or single punctuation. Here we're defining the union of white space and single punctuation and then taking the complement. And finally, we can define a word as a sequence of one or more characters. We also want to define a language-specific list of abbreviations. This will vary from language to language. Here is a small partial list of English abbreviations. Mr. Mrs. Ms. Doctor. Professor, and so on. Also, etc. Example. E. All of these abbreviations should be tokenized as a single symbol. We also have abbreviations such as limited, limited with a capital L, ink, and so on. A full-fledged tokenizer would need to include a much more comprehensive list of abbreviations. Next, let's define abbreviations formed uh, as acronyms of initials.
having defined a set of letters, we can now define an acronym. as a letter followed by a period. Here's escaping the period. Here's another way of including period. Repeated one or more times. Let's fire up FOMA and take a look at what we've done so far. We see the echo statements printed out here. as well as a summary of each machine that we have defined so far. And we can see a sample of abbreviations, acronyms. Next, let's define numeric expressions. A digit will be 0 through 9. Now, in FOMA and XFST, 0 is a reserved symbol reflecting null. And so we will have to escape zero like this or like this. Next, we'll define numeric operators. minus, plus, times, divided by, equals, or colon. We'll also define numeric separators. as period or comma. And finally, define a numeric expression as a sequence of digits, numeric operators, numeric separators, But we also want to ensure that any numeric expression contains at least one digit. And so we will intersect this machine with the machine that, ver that ensures that there is at least one digit. So a machine containing a digit. Let's try out our numeric expression machine.
we see that a variety of numeric expressions are accepted. Next, let's define a token. This gets to the heart of our tokenizer. We're going to define a token as consisting of a word or a punctuation symbol. or an abbreviation, or an acronym, or a numeric expression. The next step will be to use the longest match operator to do a longest match on tokens. This is the longest match operator. Token will be longest matched and when it occurs, we're going to insert a special symbol that we can choose. We could choose space, we could choose new line, To make this visible, for now, let's use a dash. We'll replace this later. Let's try out tokenize. That's not terribly helpful, so let's try a specific example. This is a much more interesting example. The string that we've provided is, hello there, Mr. Rogers, with spaces between each token. There's the spaces. Nothing has been done with them yet. But the dash symbol was inserted after every token. Hello was recognized as a token and dash inserted. There was recognized as a token and a dash inserted. MR was recognized as a token separate from period. We want that to be together, so we'll have to go back and look and see what happened there. For now, we can observe that this was separated out as its own token. Rogers was marked as its own token, and period was marked as its own token. There's a couple of things that we need to do. One is get rid of these spaces, and two is try to debug what's going on with Mr. We would hope that Mr. is recognized as an abbreviation, 
So let's see if we can debug what's going on. Before we do that, let's switch over and use a new line as our tokenizer, as our token symbol. And then add one more machine that will get rid of the extra spaces. Any sequence of white space, which will include the new lines that we've inserted. will be longest matched and rewritten as a single new line symbol. We will then compose tokenize with remove extra white space. Finally, we're going to invert the net so that we can apply in the other direction. We'll leave this debugging for another video. We have now completely constructed our tokenizer. The last thing that we're going to do is apply the tokenizer using the XFST tokenize program, as well as using FOMA's flookup function. When we run XFST using the dash help flag, we observe that we can provide additional commands at the command line using the dash E flag. When we do so, XFST will execute the command specified as it starts up. We will use this in conjunction with, with the dash L flag that we've been using for our startup script and dash stop to exit from interactive mode. We'll start by loading the commands from the, token, the tokenized file. And then we're going to save the machine to the XFST binary format. And finally stop. When I hit enter, XFST will read and execute the commands in this file, then will execute this command, and then will stop.
the file was executed. The file, the binary file was written and the program exited. The tokenized program is included with XFST. Using this program, we can run, we can accept as its argument a binary file from XFST and then provide to tokenize a string on standard input. Tokenize will run this string upwards through this machine and the result will be printed to standard output. Finally, let's look at doing the equivalent in FOMA. FOMA does not have a tokenized program, but it does have flookup. flookup takes as its argument a finite state transducer in FOMA's binary file format and then applies words through the machine, again, reading from standard input and printing to standard output. By default, flookup will print the input, each input string, followed by a tab, followed by the output string. We don't want the input string to be printed in this case, and so we will also use the dash x flag. Before we do so, we will observe that FOMA also has the dash E flag, allowing us to execute a command on startup. And a dash S flag, which stops execution, similarly to XFST's dash stop. So let's create the binary format file for FOMA corresponding to this tokenizer. When we run this, FOMA will load and execute the commands in this text file. Then we'll execute this command to save the stack as a file in FOMA's binary file format. And then we'll stop. Next, we can run a string passing it as in through standard input to flookup with the dash x flag and we have tokenization. This concludes our lecture. In this lecture, we considered a number of topics. The overall topic was how to create a finite state transducer to perform tokenization in English. To do so, we looked at a number of concepts in XFST and in FOMA. We used the echo command 
to print out informative messages to the user as the file is run. We use define to define a named machine. We use the Unicode escape sequence inside quotation marks to specify a character using the Unicode escape notation. We used the vertical bar or OR symbol to union together multiple defined machines. We used the comment notation to mark comments that are not read by, the, by uh, FOMA and XFST, but can be read by the human. We used parentheses to mark optionality. Here, marking that we can have two periods or three periods. We use the plus symbol to denote a recurrence one or more times. We use the curly braces to denote the expansion of a sequence. We use the longest match operator to insert a new line or other special symbol after each token. We def used red regex to define a regular expression that goes directly onto the stack. We use the composition operator to compose tokenize with remove extra white space and we use the invert net command to invert the network that is currently on the stack.